Hello, I'm Denis Villeneuve, the director of Dune. I'm happy to introduce one of my favorite moments from the movie, which is the Spice Harvester sequence, where Paul Atreides encounters the deep desert of planet Arrakis for the very first time. But strangely, he will feel at home, like coming back to a place he has never been before. I don't know if you ever experience that kind of weird, inexplicable connection, but sometimes, Nature can mirror our deep need to belong to the world, and that is what this scene is about. Enjoy. I discovered Dune, the book in my youth, and I remember being totally fascinated by, by the book, by its poetry, by what it was saying about nature. There was in this book the journey of a young man that was struggling with his identity. And the way Paul finds home through another culture, to the Fremen culture, for me was amazing. But the challenge in adapting Dune to the screen is how do you convey the interior worlds of these characters and the richness of the world that they inhabit? And I think we all wanted it to reflect our times. And I think some of the themes are just so part of the world that we're in. So we wanted to emphasize the prescient quality of it and what we need to do to protect what is dear to us, like the environment. You've worn a steel suit before. No, this is my first time. Your desert boots are fitted slip fashion at the ankles. Who taught you to do that? It seemed the right way. Are you from it? I am accepted in both siege and village. Now, come and see the spice sands on which your livelihood depends. One of my favorite idea in the book was the way Frank Herbert approached uh, ecology. For me, was so fresh, was so poetic, so powerful. His view of nature was mesmerizing. Frank Herbert understood that water and oil were finite resources, and the people that controlled the water, the oil, or the equivalent, the spice, they have power. And so Arrakis was once a beautiful green planet, but as a result of all the harvesting of spice has turned into an incredibly brutal, beautiful, but brutal place to survive. But Frank Herbert knew you have to entertain first, and then you can't just preach to an audience about ecology or social issues. You have to have a great story. spice scattered over the surface. A rich spice bed by the color. If you get a little higher, you'll have a better view. We shot that attack on the spice harvester, and it was a challenging scene because of the weather. I was praying the gods of cinema that they will bring us good weather on that week, and thank God they were with us, because it was important for Greg and I that the light would be consistent. We were shooting in the deep desert, and we had brought our nitopter there, some part of the spice crawler with tons of wind machines. It was just, like for me, pure fun, because at the end of the day, that is a moment of cinema. It's a scene that required a lot of choreography, a lot of time of shooting, but uh, honestly, those are my favorite thing because it's, it's a sequence that just relies on, on cinema and the power of the images, and, and uh, we had a great time shooting that. You see these spotter aircraft looking for worm sign. Worm sign? A sand wave moving toward the crawler. Worms travel deep but get closer to the surface when they attack. If you are patient, you should see one. Because in Dune, rhythm is everything. Rhythm is life, and rhythm, most important, can be death, too, because rhythm attracts the worm. The worm always comes? Always. They're drawn by rhythmic noises. Why don't we just shield the crawlers? A shield's a death sentence in the desert. It attracts the worms and drives them into a killing frenzy. Is that a worm? 
One of the main vehicles of Dune is the Ornithopter. In the book, it's described as a plane that uses a propelling system that looks like a bird. And uh, it's like a kind of challenge to bring that to the screen because it can either look fantastic or very silly. To make this a reality, we started back in February 2018 with Denis and George Hall came along. Uh, with them, we conceptualized this first version of the Ornithopter. We had insect references, we had bird references, we got helicopter references, and then as we went along, we had more angular references for the world of, of Doom. I said I want them to look as real as possible. I want my mother to believe that this thing can fly for real. I want it to obey to gravity laws. I want it to be a bulky and powerful uh, machine that looks like a military uh, helicopter. Call and crawl at Delta Ajax Niner. Worm sign warning. Acknowledge. Who calls Delta Ajax Niner? Over. They seem pretty calm about it. Unlisted flight, Imperium business. Worm sign north and east of you, 3.7 kilometers. Delta Ajax Niner, this is Spider One. Worm sign confirmed. I remember going to London where they were being built and thinking, these things are huge. Are you out of your mind, Patrice? And he was like, no, 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 they need to be believable. And then when we had this 300-ton crane dropping these <laughs> ornithopters in the desert, all of a sudden, they didn't look so big because the desert is so vast that Patrice was right. They really did need to be so big. They've been constructed in such a way that when you're next to them, the amount of detail that they have, I was blown away, really. Worm is on intercept course to your position. Contact in five minutes. So what happens now? They'll call a carry-all to lift the crawler. They'll harvest right up to the last minute. Calling carry-all Alpha Zero, ready for docking sequence. Contact five minutes, over. When I decided to make Dune, my only condition was that I wanted to shoot in real environments. It's insane landscape here. It's insanely yeah. beautiful. Are we in the wrong spot here? There it is. At done in the past a movie that I had shot in Jordan and I remember saying to myself wow if ever I make Dune that's where I'm coming because the landscape are unbelievably powerful and the light is mesmerizing. The light is absolutely unique it feels like there's something beyond us in the soil in the air and in the sky so it feels like there's very much a spirituality that exists there. Prepare to be airborne in 30 seconds. Docking sequence initiated. Brace yourselves. Alpha Zero, we're short one point of contact. What is going on? It's one of the anchors. It's dead. We were trying to be intimate with people. We were trying to hear people's quiet discussions. We felt that we could get smaller cameras closer to our actors. So we felt like shooting digitally wouldn't affect our performance, but still gave us that size, that scale, that dimension, that scope that we were after. How many men on that crawler? Crew of 21. Our ships can take six each. and still three short. We'll find a way. From a color perspective, Denis wanted Arrakis to be harsh and desolate. And part of that was we tried to never make the sky blue. We tried to say yellowy, washed out sand and then white sky. Shield generators weigh 100 kilos each. Yes, Gurney, have our escorts throw out the shield generators. Yes, sir. And Paul, I want you at the back of the thopter. Guide them in. Delta Ajax Niner, put seven men each in my ships now. I wanted the light to have that quality, and I knew that Greg was totally the one that could bring that to the movie. And the thing is, we decided that the movie will be that we will use the IMAX format for the dream sequence and the desert. We based our ratio on how does Paul feel. When Paul arrives in Arrakis, the world opens up. So we're trying to mimic Paul's existence at that point.
just to be in that expansive space, dunes and mountains as far as the eye can see. Such a beautiful place to be. Where are they? Sir, it's protocol for a reason. If we take one step out, they're as good as dead. Besides, we've got a full load of spice. We can't just leave Damn it. the spice! I want every man off that crawler now! desert was such a transformative experience because it made us feel how small you can feel as a human in the vastness of the desert, but also be in relation with the sun, with the sand. in Jordan, Paul is kneeling in front of the spice harvester, and he wanted the kneeling in front of it to be really specific, and uh, eventually he just showed it to me, like, no, 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 it's, 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 it's like this, and then into the sand, you know, like, as Paul Atreides, and uh, that was awesome, because in that moment I went, he has his finger on the pulse of Paul, which is a good feeling. Get up! Let's go! What's the matter with you? Come on, let's go! When you take the decision to make Dune and you go back home, the first thing you say to yourself is, what about the worms? Which is the big challenge. I really love the scene where they first go out into the desert and they see a worm attack. It has to be very carefully timed and we very carefully crafted that. It was a collaboration really between me and Denny, but also with Sam Hudecki, the storyboard artist, that we would compare notes and try and kind of get the thing in really good shape before they actually shot the real action. We tried to approach the worm with the same concerns that Frank Herbert wrote and created the worm, which is like a biology. How this creature adapted to the, his environment and how it feeds, how it hunts, how it moves, how it behaves. It all came from that feeling that the worm will need to look like a survivor through the ages and that it will have that kind of prehistoric quality, that it will have the scales and that kind of very rough skin that has been grinded by the sand through centuries. The sandworm was unique in that we were concentrating on the mechanics of the movement. We studied real world desert camouflage creatures to understand how they would interact with their own environments, and we tried to apply some of those lessons to how these sandworms might function. We had to work very closely with our visual effects vendors to understand how sand might propagate if a giant creature is pushing its way through folding sand dunes. Does sand collapse in the vacuum behind it, or does it maintain as a mound above it? And we had to spend months understanding how a worm of that size would move through a huge field of sand. And finding the balance between the artistic goals and what the real world mechanics might be. Hey! Okay. One of my closest collaborations in editing is the sound department, and I wanted as an editor to be able to build that sound world into this film right from the outset and bake it in. So I was collaborating with the sound department while we were filming. The sounds of the worm chase, the sounds of the ornithopters, all these were being developed in tandem with the filming process. Sand itself in large masses at the right humidity makes these beautiful whale-like groans. And it almost makes the desert like it's its own character because it has a voice. And we wanted to bring those kinds of sounds to the movie. It was also hearing those sounds kind of suggested what the sound of a worm underneath the sand might sound like. The first thing I tried doing was sticking a microphone underneath the sand, and I realized that a sand dune is a resonant body. You can hear someone walking 100 meters away. So we then headed out and recorded 
the real desert as much as we could. The Fremen think of the desert as beautiful, and I didn't want to make a harsh, scary, over-the-top desert. I wanted the sounds to be beautiful, so one of my suggestions was to put in ocean waves when the sand is moving with the sandworms. So that was a way that you can change the character of an environment uh, into something beautiful from something maybe terrifying or scary. When you're sitting in a theater and you hear sand blowing and moving and things and the wind all around you, you're put inside this environment. That's a very important part of what we do. Bless the maker and his water. Bless the coming and going of him. May his passage cleanse the world and keep the world for his people. I will keep fond memories of our shoots in the desert. Those memories will stay in my mind for the rest of my life. It was by far probably one of the most exciting and beautiful shoots I had. And uh, it was a great adventure. And uh, I had an amazing crew, yeah.